G'day and welcome back to my channel. This is the Rich Katsu. It's a tiny little amphibious tank from Japan. Yeah, it was basically a prototype that was designed and then tested. Didn't quite go into active production, but it's fascinating none the least. Anyhow, I finished it. Yeah, it's all painted up, all camouflaged, weathered, all done. So would you like to see the process I went through to paint that up? You would? Great. Well, hang in there. Roll the music. <laughs> So here is the catsuit, as she was at the end of the last video. I put Steinal Res Green on there, which is a nice olivey base colour, which was so close to the colour that this actually was, I didn't bother. I'm going to filter it a little bit later on, just to adjust. I would painted the torpedoes the black colour, just as a primer on those, that's Steinal Res Black. I had uh, done all that work on the track links. If you haven't seen that video already, go back and have a look. The track links have all been weathered and they've had all kinds of effects put on them. But now I need to return my attention to the camo scheme. And it's a four color camo. So that's going to require a bit of thinking. I first planned to paint everything in life color, just hairy brushing it all on. But the colour mixes started getting complicated and I sort of thought, well, I'm going with the Steinle Res Green and I'll filter that. I'll probably use some of those colours and filter them. But the one I'm going to have the most trouble with is yellow. And mixing up a yellow, sure I could probably match the colour, but hand brushing yellow is really difficult. You often have to put white down first for it to show through. But anyhow, I decided instead just to put the silver on the uh, torpedoes and uh, paint up the screws, uh, brass, rust up that muffler and then think about that yellow. To get the yellow colour of the camo, which I'm going to airbrush on, I'm going to use my new cordless compressor. And if you don't know what that is, have a look back at my previous video, which is one of my Gooch series where I target problems. And in that, I discuss these new cordless compressors. And this is the airbrush that came with it. Since then, I have an adapter and I can actually put any kind of airbrush I like on these cordless compressors. But when I painted the catsuit, I only had this um, this airbrush to fit the compressor. Didn't have the adapter from Bernard yet. Now I needed to create the yellow in the camo colour, but I didn't have any of the colours mentioned in Rich's paint guide. I had a taco and I wanted to airbrush it and I wanted to try out the new cordless. So I had to mix that colour. Now there's a couple of ways I could do it and I used my iModel kit app to get this mix. Now what iModel Kit does, it's a terrific little program, but it only does work on Apple devices, is you can take a known colour from another manufacturer, or you can take a swatch, um, basically from a photo, like your photo, you can take an eye drop out of it and pick the colour. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can get a colour that you want, and you then can match that using the program to colours you have in your inventory. So I have found, according to that mixture there, that if I use these three two yellows and one white from Otaka, I could match the camouflage yellow. Now, when I started airbrushing this, I didn't know one thing about this cordless compressor, and that is it has two speed settings, two pressure settings, if you like. It has a high and a low, and I did my entire camo using the high pressure setting, which really you need a low pressure and, you know, you want to just use a little bit of needle at sort of close distance. Uh, so bear that in mind when you see what I did. You can actually get much better results as I showed in the video. When I did the video and I tested this, I'd accidentally flick this to low pressure when I did all the really tiny, fine airbrushing with this brush. So there you go. Anyhow, let's have a look at how I airbrushed this yellow onto the catsuit. Now, I wish I had known the trick of lowering the pressure before I started, but oh well. Anyway, I started by mixing those colours, just eye dropping into this airbrush because the Ataka Red Series are airbrush ready, so you don't need to thin them. And I generally kind of mix in the cup. I know you shouldn't, but if you're only going to do something small, it seems like a little ludicrous to mix up a whole lot of paint in a jar, use a tiny bit, and then you have to throw away that colour. I mean, if I'm going to use a colour mix for a lot of things, like with my ships, I've mixed up some blue that are going to get used with the sailing ships and some sail colour. Yep, I'll, I'll mix up a big batch and I'll keep it there stored in a jar, ready for use. Yeah, all right, off we go with this airbrush. Unfortunately, it's at high pressure, so I am struggling a little bit. But quite frankly, 
it worked surprisingly well, even though the pressure was too high and I was having to be very, very careful pulling back on the, um, the trigger. But I sort of got the hang of it after a while. So this is the cordless airbrush and it's not very noisy. Like you can hardly hear it there because <laughs> I'm talking over the top, yes, I know. But honestly, the cordless airbrush was so usable and uh, would have been more so if I'd actually been in low pressure. But I was able to match this camo on a 172nd scale model fairly closely. And I didn't get too bad an edge. Later on, I touched the whole thing up with Steiner Res to get crisper edges, because it is a hard edge camo, after all. So it's not one of those ones, like the Panzer ones, where you, you airbrush it because you want a soft edge. I was just seeing if I could get a nice smooth coat. This is the thing. If I had hand brushed the yellow on, I would have to put white down first, because yellow bleeds anything underneath. But if you airbrush, and especially if you can get two or three coats, as I've done here, your yellow can look really good, especially if there's a compatible colour underneath, and green is a colour that'll work. If you had black under that, or purple under that, or red under that, yeah, it's just not going to work. It's too hard. But green being very sympathetic to yellow, and the fact that I didn't mind if it bleeded a little bit because I needed to tone down that rather bright yellow colour. So I worked my way through and I pretty well got all of this airbrushed using that cordless um, compressor and the cheapy little Chinese airbrush. I was quite chuffed. Not a bad result after all. So after about probably only 15 minutes of painting, I had all the yellow areas blocked in. So I'm pretty happy with that. And there's a little test fit with the torpedoes, which had already been painted up. And I was starting to get the look that I wanted. But we needed to move on with the rest of the camo. Now to produce the camo scheme, I'm going to need a sort of a ready colour. I'm going to use this life colour German oxide. And I'm going to need a dark brown. So I'm going to use this life colour again rot brown. Now the reason I'm going to hand paint these two um, with my airbrush, right, rather than airbrush it is life color lays down beautifully and I've never had any issues doing a freehand camo with life color. I've done it numerous times on numerous um, vehicles and I've even done aircraft camos as well and life color always lays down really nicely. It dries perfectly with no brush strokes. Might require a touch up might just the little second layer just to sometimes you know give it a little less translucency sort of bolster it up a bit but really it goes on well and if you use a sable brush i've got a nice one here from rosemary co then you can produce any kind of camo scheme and it will look just as nice as airbrushing i'm not kidding most people just don't believe that i've hand painted it anyhow you'll see the results at the end of this video hand painting with life color is such a joy it really is so easy I don't thin it, I paint it straight out of the jar, and I stir the jars, I just stir them with toothpicks. If you shake them, you'll end up with gunk in the lid as I found, and then the lids don't fit, and then they'll dry out and go rotten. But generally, life colour is a joy to use. The pigments are very fine, and it goes down so nicely, especially if you've got a sable brush. I, I'd never really use sable brushes. Somehow, Someone had told me that you, you shouldn't use sable brushes with acrylic paints, but it's bullshit. You can use them. I'm doing it right there. So just eyeballing from the um, colour layout on um, Rich's sort of guide there, I first mark in the edges, sort of roughly try and get all the, the outline, if you'd like, of where the camo is, and then I block it in. Now it's only going to require a couple of coats. It... Um, Life colour is really quite good. You'll, you'll, you'll only need to go over it you know, twice. Um, it, it will all smooth out. Like when you first put it on, you think, oh, I know this is going to look dreadful, but you've got to let it dry. It's almost like Steiner Res. Steiner Res will self-level, dry out, and what looked horrible when you've airbrushed settles down to a nice, satin smooth finish. Well, life colour is very much the same. And life colour, unless it says gloss, it will be matte. It will be flat. So the finished result, wow! See, it just looks, it looks as smooth as airbrushing. It really does. Now, that was the red colour at first, the oxide colour that I'd use, which is the closest match without having to do a real sort of complicated mix. 
And next I needed a really dark colour. Now they sort of said black. It really should be a black, but I'll very rarely use black on any of my models because at scale and seen from a distance in you know, real life, you won't see black as black. It'll always be a little bit diffused because of the atmosphere and the light. And it'll often be tinted to be whatever's around it. So I've used a really, really dark chocolate brown, which on my tests, I did a few little tests first on a card to see how the colours all lined up. That gave me a nice four-tone camo. So the Steiner is green, and it's sort of flurry yellow, which I know is going to tone down with a bit of a uh, rusty orange wash. The Oxide, and then the dark, dark chocolate. The, um, they called it rot brown, I think. That was colour. showed you the colour before if you want to match the life colour. But basically, I eyeball a lot of things. I'll, I'll use my paint programs, but I'll allow my eye to, to basically work out do the colours work. Now I'm, I'm kind of lucky I have a very high level of colour perception. I was tested when I was young. I went for a job at Mount Isa Mines for school holidays just to work in the computer department and they did a test and they thought I was cheating on the colour test because they said I could differentiate colours much better than anyone they'd ever seen. They, they thought it was impossible. So there you go. Hopefully, even though my eyes have become rather bandicoot over the years, they're still pretty good. I was so chuffed with the final result, I actually did a mock-up. I dry fit the parts to see how it would look. And, I mean, I could have stopped there. I was really happy with the result I've got. And you can see the colours have all laid down flat. There are no perceptible brush marks. I mean, the only place you actually see a little bit of differentiation is the airbrushing of the yellow, the yellow being a bugger of a colour. But all the life colour has gone down absolutely flat. But I needed to um, add some mud and I needed to add some panel line edges. So I did a bit of that with Life Colour. I've done it all before in other videos. So go back and see how I did it then. Well, there she is. That's the Katsu all finished, all painted, all washed, a little bit of chipping on it. I didn't do much. I just ran a silver pencil around some of the edges that might have got worn. You know, this thing wouldn't have seen much action. It was really just a prototype. They'd only sort of tried it out. I don't know if it ever launched a torpedo in anger, so we don't know that. But um, it's pretty, <laughs> and it's a very unusual subject. So I love that, and that's one of the reasons I built it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this series where I've discovered this unusual craft and then built the model and painted it and done the camo, and you now there she is. It's, uh, it's been quite a journey, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So I hope you have too. Now, if you like what you're seeing, by all means, subscribe, hit that notification button, comment, like, just be respectful about things. And if you like, if you'd really like to support me, you can go to Patreon from as little as a dollar a month. You can see all my videos 24 hours early. And not only that, they're advert free. So how good's that? All right, that's enough for me. I'll end this video with a collage showing you the katsu from all different angles so you can get a really good look at it. So it's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry Udini.